There's another relief here, too, is that, that I mentioned it, too, though, but God doesn't evaluate me on the basis of my performance or by my accomplishments or, or by what I possess. I think that's good for us to be reminded as a church. God is not evaluating us in terms of whether we're good and faithful servants or just good and faithful in general on the basis of our performance, our accomplishments, or by what we possess. So that means that people who uh, perform better on, a, on one day or in one week or in one month or perform better in one quarter, they are not more loved by God that day or that quarter than they are on the day or the week or, or the month or the quarter that they did not perform well. But we're trapped in that. We are for sure. If we have a bad day as a parent, we feel like the whole day's lost and we're tempted to think, Uh, that that we evaluate ourselves and and maybe even tempted to think that God might be evaluating us or for sure that our friends are evaluating us as to whether we're good and faithful on the basis of how well our kids behave or how well we looked while we were disciplining our kids or how well class went today or how whether I passed that test or not or whatever. You just go down the list of all the things we're using to evaluate ourselves and we are actually evaluating ourselves on the basis of performance. How well I did how well things went, or even achievement, how well things went, whether I got the promotion or not. If I don't get it, it means I'm a terrible person. It means I'm a worthless person. It means all the education I've received up to this point has been a waste. And, and I think that is a, a wrong and faulty way of viewing all that is happening in your life. God is not evaluating us on the basis of our possessions or achievements or on the basis of our performance. We can be free from all of that. I don't have to tie my emotions to a good Sunday or a bad Sunday as a pastor. I can't do that, actually. I don't don't want you to tie your emotions, meaning your whole week is thrown. You're rough with your family, rough with your roommates, simply because you've had a bad week. We can't allow uh, those type of circumstances to really dictate to us whether we have worth whether we have value, it can't dictate for us whether or not we evaluate ourselves to be uh, good with God or good with others. We have to release uh, our, our identity and release our evaluation of ourselves from those things and just remember faithfulness, loyalty, fidelity to God. That's what he's looking at. And in that case, it's kind of like me saying to my, one, of my, one of my kids, or like maybe you've heard someone say to one of their kids, listen, I don't care what you get on the test, Did you do the best you could? Did we study? Did you put the time in? I love you no matter what you get on the test. That's kind of the same way. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's very similar. God's a good father. He knows we're going to make mistakes. He knows we're not perfect. He knows we're not going to always do what we're supposed to do, not always going to achieve all that we know we can achieve, perform all that we know that we can perform, uh, possess all that we know we can possess. But he's not evaluating on the basis of that. It's faithfulness to him. And when that's the case, even when we've made a complete flop of things, when we come to him, we're received well by a loving father that says, let's work on this. Let's talk about this. It's all the same. It's relational. And so for us, I want us to see that that is a measure of relief. Now, this is not good news for someone who actually measures themselves by those standards. If I tell you, that God is not actually more pleased with you because you've become the CEO of a fast-growing company, uh, and that's what you've been spending your entire life's trajectory trying to reach, well, that's not good news, is it? It's actually a bit of a gut punch. It's actually a bit of a setback. Like, well, no, I thought all this meant something. And maybe in one way it does, but in this way, in terms of how God thinks of you and feels about you, uh, how he relates to you, it does not. It does not mean, uh, it, it does not have that kind of significance. And so I think actually it's not good news initially when we hear it that God isn't evaluating us on the basis of our performance because we've been trying really hard. But it is good news to those of us who will repent. We can find freedom and we can find a path to, uh, to faithfulness by, by realizing the actual thing that God recognizes and rewards is faithfulness. You know, there's a lot of people in history, in church history, that are going to actually show up before God at the judgment and actually cite all of their productivity for the kingdom of God. They're going to say, but, but Lord, Lord, haven't we done all of these things? Didn't we cast out demons and didn't we do all these wonderful things? And what's he going to say to them? He's going to say to some of them, 
I never knew you. We never had a relationship. I wasn't evaluating you on the basis of your religious activity. Did you think that's what this was about? And so you, what we see at the end when we get a glimpse into the kingdom is a lot of religious people thinking that their obligation to God in order to be received well by God, to be in good standing with God, is to do as many religious things as possible to try to earn some right standing with God. And, and the good news of Jesus is, is actually completely the opposite, that there, there is nothing good like that that you can do. There is no achievement or performance or possession or, or, uh, or anything like that that would put you in any better standing with God it, other than what Christ has done for you, and then when you, when you sort of remove all of that, you're only left with what Christ has done and your faithfulness to Christ amid the ups and downs, the good and bad, the failures, mistakes, and sin and successes. All of that is something that God works out with you, but you remain faithful to him, never regarding yourself along the lines of your possessions or your, your achievement or, or your productivity. Always, always, always regarding yourself the way God regards you, as his dearly loved child, as his good and faithful servant, striving to live up to what he has already called us 